There were some important tasks that Hizur was involved in. This is the reason why Hizur is late, a bit late today. الذين قالوا إن الله أحد إلينا اللعن من اللعن من الرسول حتى يأتينا بقربان تأكله النار قل قد جاءكم رسول من قبل بالبينات وبالذي قلتم فلما قتلتم ان كنتم صادقين یہ دو آیات جو میں نے پہلے تلاوت کی ہیں دیس ٹو ورس سیٹ از اور از ریسائٹڈ وی ور ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دس وین دی ٹائم فنیشڈ لیکن بٹ بیفور از اور ڈسکسز دیس از اور وانٹس وشز ٹو to speak about the service the Jamaat is, uh, is doing in Japan that is in the Japanese earthquake in Kobe there are many Japanese friends who are taking uh, interest in this um, when they are mentioned and they are very happy and their relationship with the Jamaat increase, increases I had told them that those people who, has, who have served which include some Japanese friends as well all of their names should be sent to me so that I could um, relate, I could uh, mention them and when they are, when they, na- they hear their names, they will be happy and there will be a record of their service in the whole world. So they have, res- in response they have sent me a list and I'll, uh, first I'll read you this list. The order that uh, those of those people, order of the names of those people who have um, uh, served and who can continue to do so, uh, they include Atar Mahmood, Muhammad Yunus, Aqila Munib. She is uh, the uh, wife of, um, sorry, the daughter of Imam Sahib, I think. Um, Mans- sorry, Mansura Munib uh, is the daughter of Imam Sahib, then Hafiz Muhammad Amjad, Arif Maqbool Ahmad Shah, Sayyid Mashwood Ahmad, Mansura Ahmad Qadiani, Khatuna Kohiro, uh, Taka Hero, Tanvir Ahmad, the Sayyid Tahir Janood, Nasir Nadeem, but Chaudhry Muhammad Aslam Asif Beg, Abid Beg, Muzaffar Ahmad Qadiani, Lukum Ahmad Ahmad, Nasir Ahmad Qasir, Qasir, Nasir Muzaffar Zafar, Muzaffar Malik Slahuddin, Shim Shima Hara, Adachi, do you think is that correct pronunciation? Do you think that is it correct? Adachi, Adachi, Yuka Sekizawa, do you think is that correct? Hirotaka and Matsui, is that correct? Shun Matsui, Talat Mahmood. Nobuo Miyoshi, Ryoichi, Natsuyama, Anwar Ahmed Asanullah, and Nasir Bhatti, Mirza Nasir Ahmed, Amtul Wadud, Farad Rafiq, Sayyid Rafiq Shah, Masood Ahmed Anjum, and then again the difficult names have started, Masahito, and Tanaka, Masahito Tanaka, we are saying that Tanaka was a police officer, a very sincere gentleman. Do you remember him? He was um, uh, asking that you remember. It might be, uh, perhaps might be him. Or is it a well-known name? Uh, Imam Sahib said it's a very well-known name. Nisuzu Tanaka. Yoshi Aki Isuka Moto. Isuka Moto, is this correct? Tuzur says. 
Isuka moto. Masa. You saying Isuka is written Isuko. Masa, Jaka, and Isuka moto. These are probably from the same family. Rumiku Tanaka, Aisha. Aisha Bhatt, Mansoor Rafiq, Tahir, Tahir Ahmed Bhatti, Abdul Qayyum, Naeem Ahmed, Muhammad Naeem. These are uh, non-Ahmadi um, friends who are also uh, uh, hell, uh, sorry, who've been serving. Zuri Singh, may Allah sir, uh, help um, reward them and not keep them outside the Jamaat. Then they are Sayyid Mahdi Sahib, Muhammad Naeem Sahib, Mintos, um, Minto Bang, Bang, he's a Bengali, Rahman Bengali, <laughs> These are all that, um, outside the, the Jamaat, but um, they are very sincerely helping us. Been with Sayan, <coughs> with Shahid Ahmed Sindhi, Haris Abdul Shakur, Nadim Ahmed Yuji Saka, Nuru Kama Se, Miguni Jo Kamoto, Sip Sumo Gochi, Shoji Akamura, Shoji Akamura, and Tatishi. Taura, Hiroko, Suda, Suda Nayoya, Tsuda, Ishizaki. Zuri saying that doesn't say Mister, but with this gentleman, because his missus were her, her, his missus is also included. Mister Ishizaki and Mrs. Ishizaki. And Yayuki Ishizaki, Masood Mubashir, Tashuya Ikomo, and Tazuto Nagashima. These 71 sincere people who are running the camp and they are working hard every day. And the one who is working very hard from the very beginning. Um, they have uh, highlighted their names especially for prayers. One is Atar Mahmood, one is Makul Ahmed Shah, Tanvir Ahmed, Nasir Nadim Bhatt, Abid Beg, and Nasir Ahmed Bhatti. About others, they say that everyone is working with a lot of sincerity, but of them, those that are particularly of significance are these gentlemen. In this regard, I was saying that let me remind you to pray for those who uh, who are continuously helping the Bosnians as well. Here, the UK Jamaat has had the the capacity, capability to. Um, to uh, in which the Khudam and Jamaat are, are working together and the seventh, uh, seventh convoy has been sent and some very um, expensive um, items are sent there so sometimes there um, um, sometimes it, it reaches up to 100,000 or 150,000 dollars the, um, the value of that and also Germany is also sending convoys and Norway is also serving that. So remind these, remember these people in your prayers and um, they continue their uh, services during Ramzan and remember your uh, Bosnian um, um, friends who have been transgressed again in this regard. I'm telling Sierra Leone's uh, Amir Sahib of Sierra Leone who is working with these people uh, with um, a lot of um, with very uh, hard, um, he's trying very hard to help them. Um, there is a team, and those people who have run away from the um, people where there are um, um, traitors, I was only saying that in Sierra Leone, you should remember that um, they, there's a lot of destruction and um, the, uh, the, the, the tailor who was from Ivory Coast, he prepares a looting uh, and um, attacks of looting, etc. and plunder and he has um, got some, <coughs> some uh, outside foreign powers are helping him and he has been in this uh, CIA is uh, jails and when he came out from there then he went he returned and then all of the um, 
activities he has organized for people say many things about that but only Allah knows what the real situation is he's the one who is the core of a lot of these problems and he's the one who is carrying out most transgression activities and and um, a, a, a man who is um, a nominal um, of nominal importance he has been stood made to stand that he is uh, a traitor and the, they have said that the northern people are um, revolting against the southern people whereas this is not the case um, and th these people come and they c commit plunder and it's not against the uh, uh, government in such a way that it should it could cause a new uh, they, they don't want a new religion they uh, go and plunder everything even religious uh, 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 buildings uh, churches and mosques as well so it's just they're only looters and plunderers but they are getting their um, uh, powers from the our foreign countries and they 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 go outside Sierra Leone and they get training in these activities and they uh, come back to Sierra, Le Sierra Leone and they uh, create these problems and the places where the diamonds and uh, gold etc and uh, those places where they are, uh, which is agriculturally rich, they have um, targeted those areas in particular. And Ahmadis uh, are there are a lot of Ahmadis in those areas as well. So when their attacks uh, occur, then they go to the escape to the jungles, and or they go to the place where the Sierra, Sierra Leone army is um, in power, and then when they return to their homes, their homes are completely plundered. It's a huge tragedy, national tragedy, in which uh, the Jamaat is trying their best to serve them, but we don't, uh, we can't uh, if influence it to a great deal because their um, the requirement is that of um, hundreds of thousands of pounds. So they say that I'm t I want to tell the whole world that the uh, international. Um, <coughs> The international uh, societies, organizations who uh, do this kind of aid, you should uh, con people should contact them, and from Singapore and Malaysia, etc., uh, et they should um, rice, shiploads of rice, for example, should be sent, and then their uh, hunger may be um, may be uh, sorted out to an extent. And uh, these people in India, sorry, uh, in Europe who have mountains and mountains of um, grain, etc., they should um, send some of their food there. And Canadians are also are, is, are very good at helping people and serving mankind. So the local Ahmadis should approach such organizations and they should explain to them the situation. And they said that we, are, we will offer you our help. Um, uh, in the local areas and this trust is uh, available everywhere that everyone knows that the Jamaat Ahmadiyya will work um, with a lot of honesty whereas the NGOs they eat a lot of the food themselves and this is a mis misfortune of uh, Africa that those European countries some of whom especially Holland they tried to help them through NGOs and they found out that the organization itself would eat up most of the money and where the money was supposed to go they wouldn't even know about it so then eventually they pulled back their hand of help but some governments have uh, told us th themselves um, that we think that you you are the people who can perform this task so you should co contact us continuously and we should uh, organize a method of helping them because it is not the help of the Jamaat Ahmadiyya, it is the help of uh, the poor and destitute hum humanity. This is why in this uh, service we are um, we are able uh, we are we are willing to accept any help, financial help. So, but it would be spent wherever um, it's, su it's supposed to be spent. As we were saying that. Um, uh, Amir Sab, UK is uh, is listening to me as well, and in some other in some 
organization we were told some organization uh, told us that they would help us i think Huzur said and uh, <clears throat> in japan as well people are uh, uh, organizations are approaching us and telling us that we can help uh, we can perform their tasks in the best way uh, so this is um, a, d a brief report of the service of mankind that I want to tell you that it, such service continues in Bosnia and other places where a, a service of mankind should happen. The, the Jamaats there should also organize and have a se separate, uh, separate um, uh, organize, auxiliary organizations which, uh, which serve mankind. It is happening in some places in India and in Pakistan, but the, the prejudices come to the middle, come uh, come to hinder us, where there is no um, obst uh, obstacles of med of prejudice, religious prejudice, and the Jamaat manages to uh, take huge strides in service. People who are saying that when we heard about Kobe uh, yesterday, uh, Sara Rahman sent the most uh, money. Um, she is um, Abdul Rahman Sahib's uh, but's, um, a wife from uh, who has sent 200 pounds. Both of them have sent 200 pounds each. May Allah um, <coughs> reward them. And the other is Dr. Masood Al Hasan Nuri from Rawal Pindi. He has uh, sent uh, 50,000 rupees for this purpose. Zuri is saying this is not uh, a I'm not asking everyone to be to take part in this, but um, usually we take monies out of our uh, charities and our zakat. But um, these people send the money, um, have, sent, have sent the money on their own accord, and because their name, they were saying that I've, I mentioned their names so that people can pray for them. In yesterday's, after yesterday's dars, Maulid Osman Sahib's fax was received in which. He mentioned those references which are found in Bahiki, etc. Uh, he said that this is a tradition from which it tells us that this is a com they are um, these are not references which are worthy of being trusted. Huzur is saying that I wish to tell them, tell him that we have this whole subject with us because yesterday we didn't have time, so Huzur could not take the subject any further. Now Huzur is saying that I wish to tell you which references they are, which have um, found their way into um, this, uh, into these, and most of them are with regards to the uh, murder of um, uh, prophets, and they um, they explain some incredible um, incidents. So those who are asking where they are. <laughs> is saying that al mustadrak lil hakim out him it says that his uh, time his era of mustadrak is uh, 400 years afterwards or more than that on page 592 saying that he's he he died in 405 hijri so his claim is the book that he wrote, his real name was Hakim. He said his claim is that he had used the the same um, the same skills as Imam Bukhari and Muslim. The, he has uh, um, judged the references according to those, and although their um, Bukhari and Muslims has not used these references, but he has. Um, uh, he has approved their authenticity by the same method and mentioned these correct references and they have been collected almost 400 years later and some of them are such which have never been mentioned in any book before so it's the same kind of claim if 300 years after today some uh, so-called a uh, scholar stands up among the Ahmadis and he claims that these references that I am presenting of the time of the Prophet Islam, they, although the Mawlid Muhammad Shah has not mentioned in his history, but the scales with which Mawlid Muhammad Shah is the writer of um, the history of Ahmadiyyat, I have used the same scales 
and according to that I'm, I declare that these are correct so who will accept it there's absolutely n no head or tail of such claims because those references in their self they are so different from most of the references of Imam Bukhari that anyone with even the slightest intelligence or the slightest knowledge will not accept them at any cost so no matter what he claim he may, uh, makes about the scales this uh, subject matter in the history says it is false and uh, and um, if um, he's using the same scale then the internal witness will be enough to reject them the imam bukhari could not have ex uh, did not accept certain things because their falsehood was found um, within them uh, one of one of these references is to do with the death of uh, prophets and uh, this he's alleging that in the Hazrat Ibn Abbas Rizan who has uh, related this he's a, uh, one of the best companions who could have said this and he, they allege that Jesus and he, uh, and uh, John the Baptist came in 12,000 uh, disciples as well as saying that the uh, Jesus is uh, a brother from Jesus and there is mention of four, 12 uh, Desa disciples, but not 12,000. And one of the things they used to stop people from was not marry one's niece. I was really saying that when is this mentioned or where is mentioned in Jesus' uh, teachings? There, I was really saying I'm going to tell you exactly what the story is. Uh, it, Herod, it is said about Herod that he had uh, John the Baptist killed because he uh, he was in love with his brother Philip's wife and it wasn't about the daughter of uh, his brother his brother he uh, he was in love with his um, brother Philip's wife and that uh, John the Baptist used to tell him that uh, this is wrong and keep away from it Herod didn't, didn't mind he whether he accepted the advice or not but he didn't dislike it but the lady with whom this um, affair was continuing she became very annoyed and she he, she, he, she tried to um, in, to um, in, uh, to make Herod dislike John the Baptist and uh, this uh, th uh, this uh, incident, uh, this matter of not marrying one's niece, these are um, have um, have arrived from somewhere in Mustadrak, and they are con completely confused. The fact of the matter is that the uh, the the story is that the mother told her, her daughter that uh, um, at the occasion of Herod's birthday there is going to be uh, s some uh, a song and dance party and that, lady, that girl was a very good uh, dancer so she told him that you should, uh, you should um, dance in front of the um, uh, king in such a, such a way and then you uh, was in a very good way so that he becomes very impressed uh, so he so this is what happened the, when the uh, the girl danced he became so happy that uh, Herod said to him what do you want even if you want half the kingdom I'll give it to you and at this the daughter went to the mother and he said that this is what Herod has said to me because he's so pleased with me tell me what I should ask for and she said to him that Tell him that uh, uh, tell her that you will uh, you want to ask for John the Baptist's head and say to them that I want his head to be uh, on a put on a platter and show it to me. Herod tried very hard to draw her attention toward, towards other things so that she could ask for something else, but she wouldn't listen because it was her uh, strict instructions from her mother. So then Herod said, "Okay, fine, go and bring him." And then there he slaughtered him. This is reference. And they're saying that I'm, I'm going to return to this particular incident now. I'll tell you about that later. They're saying that it's got a bit mixed up. This um, this is what is Mr. Sadrak says. The real background is that there was this girl, and these this is. Um, 
similar to those references which are found in the Bible in Matthew, etc. This is the gist of, of that. Mustadrak is saying that that girl demanded that who was uh, Philip's um, uh, daughter, who was also his, uh, his uh, uh, beloved, and she said that go and cut his head right now. So Yahya was brought from where he was imprisoned and he, uh, he cut his head um, with his own hand and uh, presented it to that woman in, in a platter and made her uh, happy. But the command was that make sure that none, not a single drop of this should fall on the floor because they were afraid of um, certain calamities and catastrophes. But no matter how hard they tried, one drop of blood and fell on the floor and then it started boiling and then continued to boil. And any attempt to turn to stop it from uh, for stop it from doing that was um, failed about this was saying let me tell you uh, the other next rest of the story his his mother uh, said to the king uh, sorry to say to the daughter that um, um, this ask for this but the, uh, the king said then to ask for something else but she didn't agree so then uh, he called for uh, John the Baptist and um, uh, cut his head and then one drop of it uh, fell and then Nebuchadnezzar was um, made to prevail over him over them and he was, Nebuchadnezzar was shown the spot where the uh, the blood was boiling. So at this, the um, Nebuchadnezzar was um, told uh, to uh, uh, kill people uh, in order to quell that blood. So he took 70,000 people of the same age from the children of Israel and killed them, murdered them, and then only then did the uh, the um, blood stop boiling. And this was an inc incredible miracle. He was saying you can't even imagine how incredible this miracle is because uh, Nebuchadnezzar came 500 something, 586 years before um, um, Herod. And he had died, he had attacked um, Jerusalem and gone back. So this is a double, triple um, miracle because Nebuchadnezzar was brought back to life and he had again attacked and again he did this, which is not mentioned anywhere in history. He was, there are many such stories which are not found in history. And only then did that um, boiling blood um, calm down. So this is Al Mustadrak al Hakam. And this is, uh, in they're saying and alleging that it is similar to Bahari's Imam Bukhari, Inna Allahi wa Nailai Rajun, who's always saying that uh, this is um, such a uh, such a, a stupid reference that no one can accept it, and they have got many such um, references and brought them all together and he, they have spoiled the, those people who write the laws or jurisprudence um, they have uh, they have uh, been misguided because they have um, laid a foundation of some of their um, laws on such references and this has resulted in some things going completely wrong Huzur is saying that uh, on page 592 in Imam al Muhaddisi Nishapuri, uh, who died in uh, 405 Hijri, uh, which was um, published in from Beirut in 1978. In that it says, there will be reference to the um, traditions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu where the Jahla al-Islam is mentioned. In uh, none of these traditions are, have been um, have been um, heard from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and they are Mursal traditions, which means that they have been sent. That these have been um, uh, have been sourced to some companions, but they have not said that they have got, got heard them from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and 
One of them is, med, is found in Kanzul Amal, and this is written by Hazrat Alama Ali Ul Muttaki. And he died in 975 Hijri. This is how late this book is. And Zul is reading some Arabic from the book. And Hazrat Zakaria ke Khatal ka sabut ye hai. He's saying that um, the death of Zakaria's proof is that the, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu has not said it. A, somebody who gives a reference that Shaheed, Shaheed bin Shaheed, that is uh, Zakaria's son, as, um, Yahya, that is John the Baptist, he used to wear wool and he would only eat um, leaves because he was afraid of committing sin. <coughs> and they say that uh, this is who is saying that the Holy Prophet has never said uh, in any reference that I found in that he has, the Holy Islam was uh, murdered. Zuri really is saying that um, we have, uh, there are some uh, references uh, which indicate towards it, but we have to um, do research and find out exactly what it is. Zuri is saying that about research, I wish to tell you that it's not something which is just imaginary. There are many um, with, uh, proofs that are um, found which has. Uh, um, which showed that there was an attempt to, um, attempt on, made on the life of Hazrat Yahya, that's John the Baptist, but he was saved from it. And first of all, this reference that I have uh, mentioned, which I was saying I'm to coming to the first, I mean the first reference, this party that was happening, the birthday party, the, um, the prominent people of the city who were called, and, uh, were called and this was uh, near Bethlehem and it is not even worth accepting that all those prominent people could have been invited to the same to that um, castle which was uh, situated in the east of the Dead Sea and it was on it could have been on that edge where there was a lot of um, battles going on, and it's called the final post, and they're 70 miles away. Why would Herod take them so far away to, to have a party? It's not acceptable at all. So, the people who were invited, when we mention, when we mention them, when we re read about them, they are all belong. They all belong to those people, uh, to the city which is the, to uh, 70 miles away from the Dead Sea, and towards the east of the Dead Sea, towards Jordan. This um, castle where this party is meant to have, sorry, this uh, where uh, Jesus, sorry, John the Baptist was uh, imprisoned is supposed to have been. And the references are not saying that Jesus, he called G, um, John the Baptist and killed him himself. He said that he sent a message and said that, okay, uh, cut his head off and bring it, send it to me. So before the end of the party that had arrived there, he was saying that this incident is all doubtful. And also another strange thing is that when Herod heard about Jesus, that he's there are, um, um, he does, um, he miracles, so he said that, so did, has Yahya come back to life? So he was, attention was drawn towards uh, the John the Baptist. So um, uh, he, he was saying that has, has uh, he risen again? Has John risen again when he heard of Jesus? Uh, was already saying that, so this was known at the time that, G, uh, that uh, John the Baptist was supposed to rise. Was already saying that, um, the fact of the matter is that John, uh, John, he is the Baptist, and there is another John who is that of the Revelation, and who wrote the Revelations in the Bible, and his status is so high that the, the prophecies that he has done of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and even of the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they are absolutely incredible and they have incredible um, heavenly proofs and so much so that all the researchers 
de respect John the Baptist uh, a lot because I think he was an extraordinary uh, man and he was um, give, granted um, granted um, uh, some words from God so they, they do not find any record of him that a person John who is not found in history at all and there is not a single witness that is found that he was such and such person such and such son he is a, he's a mysterious person but what's interesting afterwards is that his style of mention uh, according to all the commented uh, the researchers it is so similar to John the Baptist as if he has uh, dictated this the revelation and the other matter is that some people say that he was a um, student of John the Baptist because the words are of Yahya, the, the style of uh, speaking of Yahya, of John, the of John the Baptist. So they say that because he is not known to have written this, so he must be some student who is not known and who is writing this. Is what saying that this mat this is a very important matter because what was the need for uh, for John to to uh, publish instead of publishing something in his own name he should have published it in the name of uh, some other man who was unknown so as if he was a separate person this mystery can only be proven this is a, a possibility that um, if um, John the Baptist had been saved uh, from an attempt on his life and then he may have uh, gone and hid somewhere else and another thing which we discovered while we were uh, doing research was that from here from the area of uh, Jerusalem when um, when ships used to go towards Rome, then there, on the way there is an island where many people were living, but there were uh, two graves are found there, and both of them um, have the name of Yahya or John, or John. One of them we know, which is who is called John the Elder, and there's another John, but one is called uh, John the Elder. But both the Johns, uh, as to whose uh, sons they are or where they came from, is not known to anyone. And what is interesting is that the more important Yaya, John, and what he has written in some letters, he mentions Jesus and he says that he has a contact with Jesus. And uh, perhaps that place is called Ephesus. He, there was another uh, island which is near there, which was a small island, which was a rocky area, and there was no possibility of anyone to, uh, to remain alive if they, if they lived there, and they, that Yahya is writing from there, and he sits there and he worships Allah, and he keeps lines of communication open with Jesus. So who is this Jesus? Oh, sorry, this John? and that uh, John who disappeared, who is he and why, what was the reason for such mystery in the Dead Sea Scrolls? All of these incidents are such which um, make the uh, uh, research um, uh, legitimate and uh, this is why we are doing this research and this is the reason why that um, some researchers, Western researchers have um, got a di di difference of mind now about this. Some of them say that there is an indication of the murder of uh, the John the Baptist, but it is not certain. But some of them say that in the writings of uh, John, the style is so similar to that of John the Baptist that no one can uh, ignore this. So because they couldn't have been one and the same, because this is this is what they are, they, they are um, um, they are saying that because they can't be the same, so it must be that he was one of the the 
um, student. So why was he? Why did he feel the necessity to hide himself if his master was killed? If there are such amazing prophecies and he's completely quiet about them, and his father is not known, and neither um, is um, anything else about him. So this is a proof that it wasn't some normal mystery, it was a very deep mystery. And why was? What was the beginning of this? Why was it? Began in this way. The fact of the matter is, when the when Guru Quran mentioned Hazrat Yahya as now, that we gave him the name Yahya, and this is the name you will not hear anywhere else. At this, we were saying that I always used to think that Yahya means one who is going to stay alive, and it seems to be glad tidings. So, if he was killed, which is normally not what happens to prophets, so this uh, response to um, the Zakaria's prayer seems to be strange. Sometime uh, for a time, I was saying that I, um, I consoled myself by thinking that he, this was the death of a martyr. The death of the martyr is alive, but this is not. Um, none, none, none of the people of the time arrived at this conclusion. The Quran told us, and the people there they said that there was a, a, a claimant of prophethood and he was killed. That is John the Baptist, and the way he has been killed, this is not according to the glory of uh, prophets. That is a prophet. And because of um, um, sorry, I was saying that uh, if uh, a king is told, uh, given some advice, and the uh, um, prophet should suffer because of that, this is um, this doesn't really uh, ring true. So we, I was saying that I thought that let us. Uh, uh, let us um, do some research so that we can um, discover s something about this. And in this regard, our uh, Egyptian um, uh, Ahmadi lady Maha, who uh, um, <coughs> um, she she um, did it research on this very well and Fozia Shah did the research on the Dead Sea Scrolls to help aid her uh, in this task um, and if this reaches a conclusion it will be presented before the Jamaat but and um, we're saying that just as Jesus is um, just as Jesus' tomb was discovered much later, if um, if we remove the veil from the mystery of John the Baptist as well, then why not? Now the question remains that um, the similarity that the Prophet has uh, explained with Sayyid Ahmad uh, Shaheed, with uh, Yahya, uh, he, the Prophet has not made it a certain assertion he has uh, as as a, a result of some revelation revelation he was asking where that um, reference is he was asking Mija um, to go and bring that we were saying that uh, the Muslim Maudan who once gave uh, some uh, some uh, sermons on uh, this issue so is saying that it is the job of a true uh, scholar that if they disagree with the uh, with the um, Khalifa then they should take it there and that this proves that there is no dictat dictatorship in the Jamaat Ahmadiyya and would never have the caliph um, the caliphs rejected this style in fact they have it have encouraged and of course, um, sometimes a proof um, that is shown is uh, is investigated and rejected. Uh, Zuri is saying that nobody's ever say that we, we, um, the caliphs never say that um, um, that who how dare you tell me something? Zuri is saying that I'm all people are always telling me things and. This is, um, and uh, I don't mind it. He was saying that the 
the Khilafat of the Jamaat Ahmadiyya is represent the combined intelligence of all the Jamaat and this can only happen if all of them, all of the scholars come together. Um, I was always saying that some people uh, say to me that where did you learn all these things from? Uh, I was always saying that it's not my knowledge, it's the Jamaat's knowledge. Whenever something comes into somebody's knowledge, they send it to me. And this is one of the important blessings of uh, Khilafat, that all the knowledge of the Jamaat comes to, to a focus and then it becomes more um, uh, purified and not as people's imaginary things when investigations are done and uh, then it is presented before the Jamaat in a, in a very um, um, after after uh, conclu conclusion so, sorry the conclusion is shown to the Jamaat after after much um, um, uh, much uh, investigation. Huzur is now got the reference and Huzur is saying that uh, um, Abdul Rahman Sahib Meher Singh says that um, he, he once heard that uh, I swear by Allah that promised him twice in Masjid Mubarak and I still as if I hear him uh, speak that the, the, the Muhammad, Muhammadan um, um, system is uh, similar to that of uh, Moses and the uh, first just as it was uh, Moses for, for the for his um, uh, series of um, prophethood and the final was Jesus in the same way the only Prophet was at the head and the final was at the, the promise in Islam and this, this is why the first um, prophet and the final prophet cannot be killed the first so the first uh, prophet and the final Khalifa cannot be killed otherwise the uh, otherwise we will not be able to <coughs> that they will not um, there will not be any similarity left anymore although in the middle if there is any uh, prophet if any prophet is killed then uh, it could it could happen. Is it saying that it is about law taqabbala, meaning that this is not a contradiction in the Holy Quran. After saying law taqabbala, the Holy Quran is saying that we used to kill the prophets. This is not uh, an um, objection against us is an objection against the Holy Quran that Allah is saying that how could you uh, say that there is an objection in the Holy Quran so the Prophet Islam says that this Lord the Kavala subject is um, the similarity of Moses with the Holy Prophet Wasallam or vice versa it is indication, an indication towards that, that there, it is proven for certain that the first prophet was not killed and neither was the second and this is also a claim with the Holy Prophet Wasallam that if there is a promise with, for the Holy Prophet Wasallam that he will not be killed he will not be murdered. So this is the subject of Rata Kavala, which makes it clear that Allah has made a decision that the first will be saved and so will the final one. And this claim of the Prophet Islam is a proof of the truth of the Prophet Islam because when he was making this claim, he was uh, inviting all the people who were trying to kill him. He was challenging all the enemy that come and kill me. If I can be killed, then I'll be proven to be false. And then the Lekram incident occurs, and, after, and apart from that, there are other trials that are brought against him about from the Christians. So there are attempts to kill him, but they are not. Um, um, they're not successful. It's a very interesting um, witness which I'm pre presenting to you. Prophet ﷺ says that one of the things that is doubtful is that Hazrat Yahya al was uh, was killed before the last 
Khalifa Jesus, and then and before me, Hazrat Sayyid Ahmad Bareilly was was martyred. Then he says Hazrat Sayyid Ahmad Sahib Bareilly, Ismail Shaheed was a a pro progenitor prophet who was saying that the Sayyid Masai Sahib Shaheed about him there is no firm uh, proof that he was indeed killed and this is he is the one because it is said that the Sikhs um, took him invited him and after that he has probably been killed but this um, he was saying that this I'm telling you from some old um, study that I'm, I'm, I did and I uh, from my memory but um, I'm, I'm saying that they should be this should be further uh, research but there is um, there is supposed to be a grave in um, Hazara district in Pakistan. Uh, so whether this was, it was actually his grave, or was he was he actually murdered? This this needs to be res, um, researched. But this is not a certain uh, claim. It is, but if if uh, the opposite of this is proven, then this does not make it doesn't um, uh, make any if affect the Prophet Islam's truth in any way whatsoever. So if one of them was saved and the other wasn't saved, then it does not mean that it is a, um, it, um, it doesn't go against the truth of the Prophet Islam. So I was saying that I'm not worried about this at all. So when this research happens, then when it is concluded, then I'll tell you about the interesting um, things which are uh, uh, which which we discover. He's only saying that I have told Maha, and uh, when we sit our um, our research, and, um, when she t tells me about what she has studied, and we and we tell them about new, I tell him I tell them about new um, research venues of research, and when this is finally done, then it shall be presented to the Jamaat in some way. So this is about uh, the Yahya al-Islam's death. So we think, as far as references are concerned, we have not uh, we have not had any firm reference that the Holy Prophet should have mentioned the murder of the Yahya al-Islam, and it should be a tradition which had um, gone to the Holy Prophet all the way back to the Holy Prophet and not stopped at a particular companion, and it should also it should also be one that is found in some books and it should not be something which um, is found you, you can't so that it, it doesn't seem that um, someone who died 500 years ago should come back such rubbish cannot be as uh, alleged about the Holy Prophet so they, with this reference whatever uh, is found whatever um, um, references are found, uh, we, they should, um, um, the scholars should send it to me because we are not making any claims, we are doing research. I was always saying that if we find something which doesn't go with our aims, it, uh, it, uh, it, it, we don't mind because we are not making any claims. Wherever the truth takes us, we will, we will be happy, and whatever help we get, we will, be, we will accept it, but we shall first um, judge it. You were saying where is those verses which we were talking about? एक हदीस के तौर पर मुझे ये भिजवाई गई ये भी कंजुल अमाल की हदीस है। As you were saying, somebody has sent me this tradition from कंजुल अमाल, and in this as well, it has not been sent. Is it has not been taken back towards the Holy Prophet सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि this uh, is reading something. This is saying this uh, is a tradition which is being said that the Holy Prophet has said that somebody said that he met the Holy Prophet and with me was Wasif Barbari as well. The Holy Prophet said that in his people, among his people, a prophet came before me whom they slaughtered and then they cooked him 
and then they ate his meat and then drank his uh, gravy. Zuri is saying that was saying that I can't um, um, so this doesn't satisfy me uh, I can't believe that um, this could be could have happened to a prophet of God and this is um, um, been collected so many hundreds of years later that and also it is such a horrific uh, scenario that it is um, uh, it is impossible for it to be true. Was <laughs> saying that if um, somebody copies Maulvi Dost Muhammad Sahib and he said a thousand years later from today he says that I have judged this according to the standard of Maulvi Dost Muhammad and this is what um, uh, what happened. The only thing is that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu name is uh, respected and love, people love him so much that um, people don't um, question it and not to question it, whereas those who serve him uh, the most was the, were those who um, analyzed what he did, it says about Imam Abu Hanifa that he saw in a dream that he was digging up the grave of the Holy Prophet and he picks up his graves and he cho chooses some and keeps them and some he just dislikes and throws them away and this Imam Abu Hanifa became very very worried and someone helped him and said that the research that you are doing then uh, those things that the Holy Prophet uh, belongs to him, you um, you take it to be the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and and um, you reject the others. So this is a great um, Allah is um, informing you of His pleasure. So when we research, we do not do so because we disrespect the, what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said. We do it because we. Um, for the sake of the um, upholding the honor of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi so that nothing can be alleged towards the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi which is a source of mockery for uh, the opponents and is a source of damage to the faith of those who are believers. So this is the principle and those um, traditions which give their internal witnesses that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could not have done this, said this and their external witnesses also uh, very doubtful. They have been discovered hundreds of years after the demise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Razi says the same thing that many other ulama have said, and this is also our point uh, point of view that uh, the word qatl or killing does not mean actual death. It doesn't mean that uh, somebody is actually killed, a, a prophet is actually killed. So these things should be thoroughly investigated. But if it does happen, if someone is killed, then as we're saying, until it is proven, we cannot deny it. And but there are some. We will have to look for some other um, reasons, etc. But this whole thing requires investigation. Imam Razi, Imam Razi says that those people who who are um, who were um, steadfast upon what they were taught previously, their forefathers taught, then and they used to reject the prophets' um, teaching that this is this is um, akin to killing of the prophets, and despite that, um, uh, the Jews tried to kill. Um, Zakaria and uh, Yahya, that is, um, uh, so Huzur is saying that is this what it actually says in the in the Arabic and it does. Hey, Zakaria and Yahya are both mentioned, that is John the Baptist and his father. So he's saying that attempt was made to kill them. So Huzur is saying I'll check the actual reference. Normally they give the Arabic but here the Arabic doesn't is not been given. So if this is the situation then that means that he also his mind has also gone to this uh, idea that um, uh, there, although there was an attempt on his life, but the, the John the Baptist survived the attempt. 
and he said the, the Jews attempted to kill uh, Zachariah and uh, Yahya and about Jesus they think that they killed him they, and the claim is not even mentioned so it's a very important expression scholarly expression which requires further investigation in commentaries three um, the killing of three prophets is mentioned Shaya, Zakaria and Yahya and this is in Qurtubi Qurtubi Fatul Bayan Tarweel Maqyas and Huzur is saying that in the Holy Quran it um, it points towards uh, their killing so and and then it also discusses this that you had previously killed those people so why are you now saying this the fact of the matter is that all the um, opponents of prophets are like each other and from the very beginning satan adopts different guises and uh, becomes embodies uh, different people in different times different time uh, times of different prophets and whether his name is iblis or abu jahl whatever you uh, you uh, call him it is basically the same satan and he always adopts the same stance in the opposition of uh, prophets so <coughs> what is said is that you are um, criminals because you are adopting the same style as others did and the style of them was that they attempted to kill prophets so it's saying We are saying that we have found the original Arabic. We are reading the Arabic. We are going to read the Arabic, which is Imam Fakhruddin Razi. أنهم قتلوا عيسى عليه السلام أعزم وذلك يدل على أن أولئك القوم أنما طلبوا هذا المجزة من أولئك الأنبياء على سبيل التعنت على سبيل التعنت إذ لو لم يكن كذلك لما صوا في قتلهم This was the Arabic reference from Imam Razi's book so he's saying that um, there's no need to um, repeat the, all the others the rest are, they're all um, in the divided in the same two groups and as far as the Shiite uh, commentaries are concerned Imams from Imam Sadiq it is um, said that he he used, he used to say in the Seer Bahar Muhid Rebrihyan Undusi that the the, this is the first part. The, f the second is uh, references to Sir Safi, volume, uh, um, volume 8, I think, volume 1, page 318. Imam, Imam Safi says that they did not kill <coughs> prophets with their swords at all. They spread their, um, or they wasted the, uh, the prophets. Uh, the prophet's uh, affairs and they let their uh, secrets be known so saying i don't know what this means but he, he was also a believer in um, in um, in uh, meaning um, uh, killing in meaning of prophets not the actual literal Meaning, uh, killing of prophets. Another uh, discussion is that of uh, that he is not, Allah is not, um, does not transgress against his um, um, servants, does not transgress a lot. Here, many people have discussed this that what does Zalam mean? They're saying, I've said the about this before. Zalam means that. Uh, perhaps it means that Allah could um, uh, transgress a little bit, Huzur is saying that I told you before that Abid is a, is a style of uh, 
as a manner of um, uh, of uh, discussion when the word abid is mentioned that means that Allah is not zalam, it means that he doesn't transgress even in the slightest, he is not cruel into the slightest, so this is a way of uh, negating this, and the Holy Quran is used this, but another aspect of this which, which should be understood is that in the word abid, those people are mentioned who are um, uh, like, um, uh, um, who are like servants and slaves and even a smallest uh, cruelty is a, a huge cruelty on them so the co the contradiction is shown that look at the look at what you imagine that Allah who those Allah should transgress a lot against those people who are completely helpless and they have no power whatsoever how could Allah how could Allah have transgressed so much against them? So this style of um, uh, speak uh, statement, uh, it not only negates that the fact that Allah can ever be cruel to anyone, it also um, it tells other people that you mustn't be cruel against uh, the, the people who are um, uh, small who are um, lowly, so the Prophet Muslim who says that sometimes in Urdu we say that don't do so much, um, don't do so much transgression, so because against this innocent person, you are, what you are doing is extreme um, uh, cruelty, so Allah is saying that how could I be cruel against and be a slave, and uh, if Allah did, it would, it would be extreme cruelty. I'm saying I've spoken about everything else, discussed everything else. Is there anything else remaining? I was asking. I was saying that now we shall turn to Wadi. So we're saying that I have mentioned this before about Banu Khanqa. we are saying there's nothing left. We are saying that I've also spoken about Richard Bell. Take this. There is a, a reference who said that I told the research group that he remembered that about Philip it also says he wasn't the husband of the uh, the wife um, was Herod's um, Herod's brother but in some references this is denied and something else is uh, being said uh, so Huzur is saying that I told Navida Shah who is the leader of the research group that I told them that um, I told her that we have, we have all things here and she has now sent the fax. Because this is um, to do with this, so I'll send it to you. According to Josephus, Herod put John to death, lest his influence over the people should lead to lead to rebellion. <coughs> Josephus, who is a very famous um, historian, he doesn't relate this incident to that at all. He says that when Herod ordered the, the killing of John the Baptist, it was because he was afraid that he was about to cause a rebellion among the Jews and he it may, it may not happen that he would uh, lead a rebellion against Rome so this is why he wanted him to be dead this, this is Joseph's own uh, inclination which he has uh, mentioned in his uh, history Herod's brother Philip Herod's brother Philip was not the husband of Herodias with whom Herod was having an affair I told you that there was some difference and this is the contradiction. Some people say that she was Philip's wife and some say that Philip's wife was not called Herodias at all. She is someone else and Philip's wife's name was uh, Salome with whom Herod was having an affair. Let me read the whole thing again. Herod's brother Philip was not the husband of Herodias with whom Herod was having an affair 
the husband of but herodias the husband of salome but the husband of salome the husband of herodias uski bibi ka naam salome tha herodias thai mein the brother his brother philip had his brother philip's name um, his wife there was salome so it is wrong that he had an affair with his brother's wife the husband of herodias being yet another herod the husband of herodias who also called herod some other herod mark seems to suggest and he was of the same name mark seems to suggest birthday in his palace a celebration of herod's birthday in his palace john the baptist at tiberius but joseph says john the baptist was executed Tiberius is in the north and in Machiros Tiberius is in the north and Machiros was on in the south quite a distance apart and Mark suggests in chapter 6 verse 28 to 29 it is impossible that the soldiers beheaded John the Baptist to Tiberius in Machiros and immediately brought back the head to Tiberius you are saying that um, what i have said this is another a reference in favor of uh, of that this um, historian called josephus he is rejecting this idea in his research he saying that it is impossible that the castle in which um, G- john the baptist had been imprisoned from there the place where the birthday party was it was so far it was in the north somewhere and this was the name of the castle and this is quite logical he's really saying that i had not known of this um, reference i said that the people who were invited their their uh, detail uh, is found and they are all belonging to the north they all belong to the north area how could they have all been uh, invited and um, how could they have tra- uh, traveled all the way to that um, castle to uh, celebrate his birthday when he didn't they didn't even know that that girl is going to demand the head of uh, john the baptist so it's ex- completely unacceptable the the birthday party was being celebrated in the north and yahya he was in the south somewhere and he was in a a castle which is on the borders and he sent him a message and said that yes this is happened whether it happened or not we don't know this will um, tell us this um, research will tell us this because the there is no mention of um, uh, john's um, a body uh, but there is a grave that's supposed to have been found so once we've done research we will inform you those saying that give this back to the research group alhamdulillah mushtaq ye mai tilawat kar chuka hu allah dina qalu inna allaha ihda ilaina anna nahnu bina ho chuki hai na tilawat ye ayat hai 184 allah dina qalu inna allaha ihda ilaina anna nahnu bina bi rasul li rasulin hatta yatiya na bi qurbanin تاکل ہنار کل قد جا کم رسول من قبلی بل بینات و بلزی کل تم فلم قتل تم ہم ان کن تم صادقین کا ترجمہ یہ ہے کہ وہ لوگ جنہوں نے کہا کہ یقیناً اللہ نے ہم سے عہد لے رکھا ہے یعنی یہود رسول اللہ وسلم کو مخاطب کر کے یہ کہتے تھے کہ یقیناً اللہ نے ہم سے یہ عہد لے رکھا ہے رسول آئے ہیں مجھ سے پہلے رسول آئے ہیں کھلے کھلے نشان دے کر وہ بلزی کل تم اور جو تم نے کہا وہ بھی لے کر آئے فلما قتل تم ہم ان کو تم صادقین تو پھر تم نے ان کی مخالفتیں کیوں کی ان کو کیوں تسلیم نہیں کیا اور ان سے کیوں عزت و احترام سے پیش نہیں آئے قتل کا معنی یہ سارا ہے یا ان کی قتل کی کوششیں کیوں کی رفتہ رفتہ آگے بڑھیں گے لیکن میں خلاصہ یہ 
mock at the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said that look it is a very simple thing that they were demanding that this is what it says in our uh, our books that you are not going to believe in any you are not going to believe in any prophet until he uh, until you bring a um, a sacrifice that is devoured by fire and then he said it was it wasn't even a, a miracle and in contradiction to that look at what our um, son of god knows Look at the miracles that he showed. He's already saying that uh, I'll bring that later on in front of you, but I'll first I'll tell you about this uh, right now. He's already saying we've only got time. We we'll discuss this further, but at the moment we will just tell you about the translation of the important words. The word Qurban is from Qurb. Qurba ya Qurbu Qurb Qurban Qurbanan. Somebody who grows close, Karuba Minho, he became close to to him. Karuban come to come close. So Karuba, who is saying that it also means to make someone close. Yukarabo is mentioned in the Holy Quran to, for Allah to to draw someone close. So this is a mistake. Karaba means to draw near or to draw someone near don't go near this um, tree which was said to Adam and Eve this is the Qurb do not don't, don't even go near the wealth of a um, of a um, orphan even though Taking care of it is your um, is your responsibility. So it doesn't mean being close to it physically. It means in uh, with the intention of of um, partaking of it. Um, if I don't even near, go near the boundaries of it. Qurban mm. plural of qurban is qarabin. is the manner a method of um, getting close to Allah. So. A, a, a way through which one can get close to someone and <clears throat> normally people say the, the animal is to be, that is to be slaughtered is called Qurban when it says in the Holy Quran Qurban and when they both presented a sacrifice that is the sons the two sons of Adam offered a sacrifice one did so with a good intent and the other did it for his own self and one was rejected and the others was accepted so there the word Qurbana is used in the Holy Quran Qurban and Aleha uh, to get close to the ones somebody worships Bana means Bana wa Sabana wa Tabayana وقد بينته قال الله سبحانه وقد تبين لكم من مساكنهم وتبين لكم لا ففعلنا بهم what um, this is this means to make clear to make evident to open something or to separate something from something else here, as I was saying, there's no need to read all of this here. It's quite a long discussion, but the gist of the matter is that one, one thing should be opened and um, or made clear uh, in order to d distinguish between another thing. So when we say in the middle of the two, then that means that we are making a distinction between two things. It is called the bean. And the Holy Quran has used the word bayinat repeatedly, which means <laughs> someone who makes a distinction between darkness and light. The Holy Quran has used the word bayan. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان. Allah has made man and He has granted him the capacity to speak. And here بيان is means to to open something which is in the is a capacity of man to to bring it to the forefront. The Hum, uh, animals had not the power to speak, only man was given the power to speak and in this there is no evolutionary um, progress known in language 
there's only so small if there is then it's so small that you can't say that uh, the chimpanzees or any other um, type of gorillas whatever the missing link there was between them and human beings he had so much power that he had an ordinary uh, uh, crude language you can't say that there was no grammar and they were screwed, but they used to speak. But look at what the amazing statement of the Holy Quran is that man was given bayan, that is the way power of speech, and, and the animals were not known. So those animals were not even given the voice box, etc. And how and the um, nerves, etc., they take messages from that to the brain, that, that all those um, nerves, etc., are completely um, denied to the species before human, human, uh, humankind. And this incredible jump that was made, despite um, uh, billions of years of evolution, they are not able to, the animals are not able to speak. And suddenly man is created and he can, he is able to speak. So this is not, the principles of evolution does not apply here, they break down. The man suddenly has an amazing difference. This is why Allah calls man khalqi akhir, that is a new creation was um, brought into being. So the word, this is the word meant, this is what is meant by the word bayan, that uh, ex um, the power of expression, expressing oneself properly. And when ladies fight, then it says that, look, they fight then they can't express what they're saying when if you they were saying that if you see several women fighting and you know, they all speak together then no one knows you can't hear what any of them is speaking so allah has not hurt ladies by saying this allah has explained a, a fact of the matter that when they fight then those women who are intelligent they can't speak ordinarily they are uh, intelligent, they can't speak, you should leave them at that time, when they cool down, then you should ask them what happened and then you'll be able to find out. But while they're fighting, you should not even try to um, resolve the issue. So we are saying that this lack of uh, power of speech is sometimes uh, temporary. So we are saying that uh, sometimes when one is in emotions are um, uh, emotions are uh, in, invigorated, then we lose the power of speech. Because we're saying that the word bayinat that is mentioned in the Holy Quran repeatedly, it has different uh, different ways it's used. For example, um, there was another verse, sorry, which I missed out. Uh, so there is no need for any compulsion in religion. Uh, Allah says that uh, because the truth has become completely distinct from falsehood. The Quran has made the falsehood and uh, truth so clear, clearly distinct as the day is distinct from the night. So what's the point of a sword? Uh, why should you force someone to accept that it is the, the night? Or otherwise I'll kill you. It's, it's completely uh, ignorant and there's no need for that. We have made it clear for you. This the same bayan is used with the Sabina Sabil al Mujrimin so that the path of the criminals um, becomes clear that this is what they used to do. Nazirum Mubin. Those people who warn, they, they are very clear in their warnings, they don't hide anything. al is um, a clear um, proof, is called uh, al bayyana whether it's um, a logical or an emotional one. The distinct difference, differences people have between in uh, trials, etc., about that, Holy Prophet has said that when there is a battle between two people, then the person who is uh, claiming should, is, it's up to him to, to approve it. The person against whom it is, uh, it is being claimed, he does not have to res respond. 
uh, and with this regard, so it's innocent until proven guilty, basically. Huzur is saying that in this respect, uh, the uh, fasha should be understood, the subject of fasha should be understood. Uh, if you, until it is proven against someone, then um, a crime is proven against someone, then uh, there is no question of someone wanting to defend himself. And this is what the Holy Prophet used to do in day-to-day -day, uh, affairs as well, that when the person who's claiming must present something, and if it has uh, any enough weight in his, uh, in his claim, that uh, the, the, the one who is who is uh, defending if there's something substantial against him only then he will be questioned the one who rejects it then falls on him this subject is a matter of jurisprudence who will say that I have uh, discussed this in detail in another subject and I have also given guidance about this because at the moment we don't we're not discussing any jurisprudence matters so we're saying i'll leave this aside there are many different types written given by Elama Raghib examples that he gives that there is Hali and etc. We're saying there's no need to go into such details the examples i've shown from the shown from the holy quran are enough sufficient we are saying that now in the tafsir, the, the commentaries are saying, inshallah, tomorrow we will enter it. Today, the difficult words, we have uh, spoken about them, inshallah, thus we shall speak, the, we'll begin from the commentary of the same words. Yeah.